All righty. Welcome, everybody. So this is a uh, this is not backed by popular demand yet, but I would love to introduce the uh, the fans and participants, just in case there are fans out there of uh, the Vandy Boys Fantasy Dynasty League. Um, this is the first episode of Commission Corner. Um, I would love to you know just do a little content creation as we go towards you know, this league is really taken off. We're uh, you know we're five years in now, and um, I feel like the hype machine just going out of control. And me and my uh, my comrade here wanted to get some content out on the airwaves. So I would love to introduce William K- Hyper Kerrigan. Um, we've done some draft discussions over the last like couple of weeks leading up to our draft, and then now that our draft is a week in the in the rearview mirror, um, we just wanted to sit down talk a little bit about winners, maybe some losers of the draft, talk about picks we liked, and kind of talk about some things looking forward to the 2023 season. Where do we want to go from here? So, William, introduce yourself. Uh, Hello, everybody. Um, I will say if you are a fan of the Vandy Boys Fantasy League at this point, seek treatment, um, because that's weird. Um. Yeah, so uh, William Kerrigan, two-time champion, uh, looking for a third. Uh, proud to troll this guy at any and every opportunity. I also am recording this right now, and I'm realizing that I don't know, because like I have my notes for what we talked about talking about, and I need to see them, so I need S small on the screen. I don't know what that accent was, and I don't know if that's going to muck up the... Uh, the actual recording should we just press on and if people no one's going to watch this anyway but if we're this small i dare, small, does it I matter? dare say i dare say we press on i don't Let's think it matters on. i think okay. it'll uh i think i, just, what's I, on I gotta screen, be able to see my bullet points you know there you go yeah listen it's a rookie mistake you yeah. don't have years of podcasting experience under no. your belt um, no and so welcome to the party you know all right well let's turn i'm here content. to learn with you so william i think you wanted to start out with five players Regardless of you know position or spot or anything, five players you know that you really liked from the 2023 draft that we had last week. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Ooh, okay, I need to watch my mic placement. Uh, I so that we had originally talked about this comparing our top five players because I'm curious to know where yours fell. I think we'll probably, I, I, have some, I think we'll have four yeah. of the same. I think we might have a different fifth, and I think that might be interesting. We might so. have a different sixth. But yeah, we'll talk. We about, only talked we'll talk about, about top five, but that's uh, I I would need to improvise who my sixth best player was. Um, I picked fifth, so I didn't really think about who my sixth favorite player was. Uh, all right, I think we probably agree on number one, Bijan, uh, taken by you, courtesy of Daniel. We'll talk about that later. Um, I we don't need to to do his accolades. Yeah, I, mean, I, um, I will say I, I am intrigued one. to see the uh, the interplay between him and Algiers on your team. I also will say that in my research uh, for this evening, I discovered uh, Arthur Smith's father, Fred, founded FedEx, which I did not know. Um, yeah. So shout out to nepotism. Uh, Bijan, glorious insight. I Bijan, also did my not number know one. Um, is going to be delivering packages to the end zone all year long. I just, I, I had no clue. I was like, well, cause I hadn't realized that Arthur, uh, cause I know nothing, uh, was Derek Henry's OC in Tennessee. And I was yes. like, Oh, that's nice. Uh, and then I went to his Wikipedia page and it was like, Oh yeah, his dad casually count- founded FedEx. So the more, you know, um, so know? I think we agree on number one. We agree on one, yes. Number who two. Would you, who would you have taken in that second spot? Richardson. I think. Interesting. I th- I have Richardson so, too. The upside is too massive. The so upside I, is too damn massive. And this is a this is a diff- this is an interesting one because I actually I think I would go um, Jameer Gibbs based on. Like to you take a you take a running back at twelve. You are committing a lot of draft equity to that player. You are committing to that player. So a running back at the second pick for yeah. me, given that like you know if 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 a couple of these guys were like generational talents, like you know like we've we've had some some wide receiver or some quarterbacks in the past, like like a Trevor Lawrence, somebody who goes like it's like oh man, I'm like this guy's a generational guy. You're looking forward next year to like maybe a Drake May or a Caleb Williams, right? Yeah you're looking at that and like, I don't see these three guys as any of those. 
I get the I feel like Richardson, Richardson might be, and that's the only reason I'd put him ahead of Gibbs. Um, I so I would go I would go Gibbs too because of the like yeah you know, you've got a, a high floor player at least for a couple of years unless they're I mean, barring injury and then also a very high ceiling player who's supposed to catch a lot of balls in Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be mine. And then yeah. as far as the quarterbacks go, see, I would put Richardson number four because I'm putting wow. Bryce Young. I'm putting Bryce Young number three because Bryce Young, while he's not, you know, he's not the runner that Richardson is. He doesn't have that like. He's elite. Bl- he's absolutely He doesn't elite. have that blow it out of the like. You know, I, I could see him being a perennial top four to eight guy at, the, at his peak. I don't think he's ever going to be the top fantasy quarterback, which is significant because he just doesn't run enough. But I think he's a really, really skilled player. Richardson, his ceiling is like the the number one fantasy player. I get yeah. that. But he well, also might I, do that for two years and then be out of the NFL. He could. Yeah. You have a RG three so, situation on our hands. That's yeah. that's my so I would yeah. go I would flip I'll go well, who, who are you dra- are you drafting RG three or are you drafting, you know, Lamar or Cam? Like what are you what are you getting with him? And it's yeah. So I I had him second. I was lucky enough to not have to make uh that decision. Um, he almost slipped to you. He did. Neil, and Neil I, and I, a, I would. Neil have... was a huge upside pick there at four. Yeah. So um, I I kind of had uh at picking fifth. I had five guys that I thought that I would be happy with any of them. I actually I mean I love drafting running backs. I don't think that's a secret for anybody now. So I. <laughs> I might have entertained and then Jameer promptly too. Them I did Lebanon. not. I did not think that Jameer would fall to me. What did you say? Uh, and then, and then I, I said, uh, "You love drafting running backs, and then immediately trading them to Lee Branson. That was a mistake. Also, did I draft Raymondre, or did I take him off of waiver? I don't remember. Might it's been, not. Might have been off waivers. It's not important or interesting. Uh, but it's, that was that's gonna haunt me for the rest of my days. Um. All right. So yeah, I had. <laughs> Uh, Richardson second. Uh, I actually had then Bryce and then Jameer in terms of my top five. Okay. The reason being, okay. I think the two QB league really, really, really switched things up in an interesting way. If this was still a one quarterback league, I'm not taking a quarterback until like the fourth or fifth round because the elite no, ones be, are already be... out there. Um, but yeah. now that it's a two quarterback league and the drop off can get very, very steep. And not only that, these guys are going to start retiring. Like I felt like quarterbacks were at a premium this year. And I thought this was a, a nice class. So I I put Bijan Richardson, Bryce, and then Jameer. And then I had CJ rounding out the top five. Cause I think any of those, so that, three was, guys, that was the other one. Yeah. That's where it goes. That's where it gets interesting. Is that like yeah. four to five to six yeah. pick? Because I mean, we we have the same four guys in our top four, but so I would actually go, um, I would actually go took. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Yeah, yeah at six, and yeah. I was very surprised to have the opportunity to take one of those two. And I know, you know, not to not to Homer talk too much, but we're going to talk about the, the you know, each individual team a little bit. And with my quarterback room, kind of needing some depth upside with some young guys. Mm-hmm. That's you know. So that's where I could have gone with like, okay, this is a premium position. I need some depth. Do I take CJ Stroud here? My only thing with CJ Stroud is because he doesn't run a whole lot. He is accurate, but in Houston, it's not a great fit as far as like being a fantasy, you know, producer at quarterback. They're very young. I no just, one knows what they're going to do. Yeah. To, to me, I see CJ Stroud as like a, yeah, his, his ceiling to me is like a eight to four. 14 quarterback in dynasty or like in, you know, in the league. Yeah. And I think that's fine. But if I have a six pick that I, I think I can take the, in my eyes, the top wide receiver in this class, it was, it was a, it was a tough decision for me because I went into it wanting to get younger at quarterback and I, and I'm, I'm pretty deep at wide receiver, but I, I just had to take the the star power guy at Jackson Smith and Jigba. You're so, also a fiend for a trade, so I I don't I, really I have am, much doubt. I am set up. I am set up in position you to some bait. to move some people to yep. to get what I need. So We're yeah, at the I'm, point I, where this league is going to get really really interesting because there's only going to be so many people that you can draft. And even now, as I'm looking at my roster trying to cut it down to thirty, it's like 
yeah, trades are going to start happening. You've been really well, have pushing to. the issue for years, but like people are going to start coming to the table. It's going to get well, really well, interesting. So, and that's and that's what I like. That's what I like about this new style, right? With like we expand the 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 rosters to 37, 38, whatever you have on your team, and then you have to cut it down. So if you have like 34 guys that you value, well, then you want to trade a, like a three for one somewhere mm-hmm. or like, you know, try and get value for these guys versus just having to cut them down the road. Yeah. And so I think that's a, a really cool, unique wrinkle that we have in it now. Well, and with the expanded um, later rounds too, I mean, even if you're trading somebody for like a fifth or sixth round pick, like you will be able to get a prospect there, Um, you know, yes. or, dr- or draft a kicker yes. if you really want to, which we'll talk about that later too. We'll talk about um, it. Um, did you we okay. we wanted to do some uh some tiering and some grading. So how should we yeah. we should have talked about this out off of the air, but this is why we're amateurs. Um because our grades are not gonna be the same and our tiers are not gonna be the same. So let's go, let's go top tier and a bottom tier, and then the people in the middle. Boom. Ooh, all right. Well, I had four tiers, so uh <laughs> oh. um okay. Let me take a look the at the bottom tier is you. just Lee. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would disagree with that. Um, so right, but my now my bottom tier has to be my okay, bottom tier. Okay, tiers. great. So listen, you, you have your four, you have your four tiers. I have my three. Let's let's get after it. Okay. Um, do you want to start with who lost the draft? Or well, do you I want already to start with my hands, so we might as we okay. can. Um, All right. So you think Lee Brant's going for the record? I lost the draft. don't understand it. Maybe he's a genius and maybe eight years from now, it'll be like, oh my God, that was the moment. But it makes absolutely no sense to me. I think the, uh, and I will continue to dub this the screw it, gimme Levis draft. I think it's uh, an iconic moment. I think it really encapsulates the mentality of the GM at the time. Um, I, I really don't get all the Levis hate. I think he could be fine. I think sitting behind Tannehill for a minute, I have Malik. I don't have a ton of confidence that Malik is going to rally. I think Levis could do okay. but And I really like the Stetson pick. So I like his quarterbacks, but like hitting the free agent board so hard instead of going after rookies makes no sense to me. That's true. I mean, I I was, I was, wondering that too now i just picture to... him doing something else and then looking at his phone after we've already called his pick and then just like he, he was just wheeling and dealing and like so, i don't know that he's got that skill nailed down yet i also put zabranski in my bottom tier um he did not have a lot to play with no uh, lee if, for those who haven't looked at the draft ledger anytime like much recently lee did not have a first round pick he did not have a third round pick. Um, and so he ended up picking in the second round and in the fourth round. Now, second round, he took Will Levis ending his slide, which I think is an upside play. Sure. Uh, do I think it's yeah, do I think it's bad? No. Do I think it's interesting for someone who's been burned by Jordan Love on his bench for the last five years to take Will Levis another like I'm gonna I mean, sit him on my bench and wait? Tannehill it's an is interesting not play. Rogers. Tannehill is not Rogers, and I you He's know not, I have but they Tanny also took as well. Malik so. Willis. They also took Malik Willis last they year. Did. So they did. And while did he look good? Absolutely not. I still think I mean it, it's a good it play. It could be for a competition. There. Oh, I'm pulling for Malik yeah. hard. I hope that Lee eats it. But I I don't I mean, have a ton of confidence that that's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't either. Levis was an interesting pick. And I, I think Levis was probably I really the right like pick the Stetson pick, there. by the way. I was gonna take Stetson. I was annoyed uh, that he got him before me. The Duvernay pick is question. That doesn't make any Devin, sense. Devin Devin Duvernay has been on half the rosters in this league and dropped. And I mean, but to be fair, when you look down the list after the fourth round, there aren't a ton of young guys with a with a lot of upside. So while I would have taken a rookie there, um You know, maybe Devin is maybe say Flowers tears his ACL and Devin Duvernay shines bright. We don't we don't root for Um, injuries. We don't root for injuries. Never root for injuries. Um, but yeah, I I think that Stetson Bennett was by far his best choice. Mm -hmm. And if Stetson Bennett is by far your best choice, that's not a strong draft. Um, to stay in the bottom tier, I'm gonna keep it in the family. Go ahead. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that Butch was in my bottom tier as well. So. I, you know, we, it was a little surprising. No offense, Butchie, of course, obviously. Listen, we all have our boards. We all have our guys stacked where we may. 
Um, Jordan Addison at two is a very interesting pick. Um, I, to me, I had him as like my third wide receiver on the board. And in a two quarterback league with limited running backs that are in premium like places to score. Um, that was just an interesting, he went to a good spot in Minnesota. Yeah. I just think that that one was an interesting spot um, to take him. If you, you know, you can trade back and get him at like seven or eight. So, you know, he could have traded with, you know, Adam for those two picks and taken that, which, you know, like if, if Adam were, you know, in the market for a quarterback or something like there's your opportunity. Um, Adam ends up staying there and he gets, you know, a, a top four wide receiver and a top three quarterback. So that's huge. I kind of get it. I mean, we don't like looking at Butch's roster right now. I, Alec Pierce is a stud. Uh, He's a good uh, we, player. We don't know yet, and we're all rooting for success, but we don't know yet what Thielen's going to bring to Carolina. Drake London is, is a beast. So I like who he has at wide receiver. So I, I was not – I mean, you know, my predictions were my predictions, and a lot of them turned out to be okay, but this one I missed sure. entirely. I was not seeing him going – I didn't think wide well, receiver would be on his and- radar. And I understand why I like Addison like a as a pick, term. but it, yeah. yeah, like why wide, wide receiver provides long-term, you know, it will produce long-term value for your team. So I get Butch like picking it. He was next to last last year. He's able to get somebody that can turn long-term yeah. value. So like, but I just thought he's, I mean, bring, he he's gets, bringing that old man mentality. If he's he not gets, going after the flashes in the pans if, if like he gets us. A running he's like nah, back there, then he's man. like really in a competition. And even without getting a running back here, I think that Butch can compete for the playoffs this year. Yeah. So I think you know it's it's an interesting pick. I think that he's in a spot where you know if you if you already have a solid roster, you can take a risk on a running back yeah. and like hey, give me like a three to four year window where this guy's going to be a stud. Yeah. And so I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, Marvin Mims, I don't hate Sam Laporta. I don't hate um, I like the other Laporta. guys, the other guys I'm kind of, you know, they're, they're fine. Um, uh, but, but the, the top pick was interesting to me. Yeah. What about you and your bottom? That's, your, that's like, exactly. Uh, so rounding out my bottom. So I, and we haven't given grades yet, so we're, we're going to, you know, be very, very, you know, the curve is, is good. So I gave Lee a C plus, uh, I gave Butch a B minus. I also uh, rounding out my bottom tier, and this isn't really fair because these teams are so good to begin with. Uh, I gave Filch uh, B minus. Uh, the the minus is mainly due to his Murphy attitude, um, and I gave Jack a B. I think both of those teams are stacked, and the game that they're playing right now is trying not re re kind of reloading, like it are kind of trying to time that right, and that's really. Tough. So I thought they had very, very good drafts, but they're they were too good. They're they're picking later in the rounds. They're not gonna have as much, you know, splash. Your, your connection got a little um got a little wonky for me okay. there. So I missed like so who you had you so had So I I had rounding out my bottom tier, I had Mark with a B minus, okay. uh, and I had Jack with a B. I thought they did a really nice job, but with the the later picks, it's just you know. Uh, they didn't need to get A pluses. Their teams are already stacked. So I, I, thought, I thought they did a really, really solid job, and I thought they did fine by themselves. I agree with you on Jack. I think that Jack, um, you know, Downs was an interesting pick. He's he's a guy that can be a really you hope can be a productive like slot guy, be dynamic and really fit in. Um, thought he was a bit of a thought he was a bit of a. Re- it's there at 10, honestly. I would have t- I mean, not a huge reach, but just you know, not the guy I would have taken in there. Um, Tank Bigsby, you never know with some of these running backs what kind of situations they're gonna be in. Um, I liked the Hinden Hooker pick, but I thought Jacko said so Jacko rounded out the bottom for me, where it was it was Butch Lee and or Lee Butch and, and Jack, like down like where I thought it was just you know, relatively underwhelming. You didn't get a guy who's like, oh man, like this guy's gonna play for me. Like, really? You didn't like the gonna... Kyle Yuschik pick there at the end? That Listen, I don't hate Kyle Yuschik, <laughs> but and I you know like, he's he's adding a defense, adding a late tight end. You just never know. Yeah. I um, mean if Zach Kuntz, if he if he hits then, you know, my apologies, Jacko. But I actually thought Mark did a very very good job with not a lot. So Mark, you know, he was Agreed. in that position like you said where he didn't have a lot to play with. 
but man, like, so I had, and personally, I had I Zay really, Flowers listed, yeah. as, and he was my number two wide receiver. So he was like, he was the guy I would have taken at six had Jackson Smith and Jigwood gotten scooped up early. Like, I yeah. love Zay Flowers. I don't like the fit so much in Baltimore, but we'll see how that works out. Devin I, A. Chain, yeah. he goes down to Miami. He's a great, I mean, he's a dynamic little running back. If they decide to play him more than the two veterans that they signed, he could be a great speedster in a really dynamic offense. And I think Darnell Washington might have been the steal of the draft at the beginning of the third round. Um, if for as far as like an upside pass catching tight end, just seems like the guy. The other two, yeah. I mean, you know, whatever. But um, no, I, yeah, I, I really, I, I really liked those top three picks. Yeah, um, he, those those are nice, and I, I love the balance. I love taking one at each of the flex positions. I, I think mm-hmm. very strong draft. I mostly just uh, docked him points because you know nitpicked Mark and because we had to wait like for it. him on draft. Yeah, night. I just like you know, I'm just being petty at this point. None, none of this matters. <laughs> Um, should we do top tier? Yeah, who won the draft? Uh, who won the draft? Uh, for me, Adam. I'm annoyed yeah, at how Adams. No. I'm I'm annoyed at how good I think Adam's draft was. Um, it, it, it and his team in, was good enough. To, Adam's lap. His team was good enough to start that. Like, <clears throat> he's a team to watch this year. He was already a team to watch this year, but now I'm pretty fascinated. Um, slash terrified. I haven't looked at my schedule to see how many times I've got him, but. Uh, yeah, Adam we, we revamped the, the schedules this year too. Yeah. So revamp the schedules. So the schedule is not going to be the same as it was in years past. So that'll be good. That'll be cool. Um, yeah, I, I thought Adam. You know, it was, and I hate I hate to do this, but I actually I actually put Adam in a tie with you at the top of my board. Um, so I thought Gibbs falling to five where you, you took him was a huge value. Um, I thought that Mingo. I thought that you taking Mingo, who you know if. The upside play, he's the wider the wide receiver one with Bryce Young coming in at the same time. Yeah. Um, can grow and develop big bodied guy that Carolina's kind of needed. Jalen Hyatt, like I said, Giants again. Giants have been a plagued wide receiver room. He's going in there where he can play. And then I thought Kyle Trask was a great value pick in the fifth round, where man, like he could be a starter this year and if you get a starting water if you get a starting quarterback anywhere in this draft then you are doing something good because in a two quarterback league you just need that kind of depth yeah um but but to go back to to adam i mean adam he came into it needing a quarterback he got cj stroud Mm -hmm. at seven or eight which is insane quentin johnson johnson i don't love him but i do like the fit um you know if if he if he if he hits, then he's like the next Chargers guy with Justin Herbert, which is awesome. Yep. Uh, Zach Charbonnet, I don't love in a vacuum, but if you have Ken Walker, which Adam already does, you kind of need Zach Charbonnet. So like you've got the backup plan in Seattle. Luke Musgrave was arguably you know a lot of draft people's favorite pass catching tight end in this yep. draft, and yep. then you get somebody like Butte, who's like you know and a former All American and like. You know, potentially a really I mean, potentially upside, a very really. interesting player. Yeah. yeah, nothing but upside at Patriots. So I thought Adam had a great draft. Absolutely. And I hate that I traded him all those first round picks to get Elijah Elijah um Mitchell last year. So there's that. We're you know, we all are gonna have those trades that that haunt us. Yeah, I had uh, we all, are. all of that uh all of that noted. I would like to call back to my projections. Uh he took a quarterback wide receiver duo in the first round, called it points for me. Thank you. Also noted that uh, it will be literally impossible for any Seattle running back to vulture his touchdowns because he has all of them uh, except for he DJ really Dallas. Does. So uh, let's go ahead and get that waiver wire uh, bidding war going. Um, so, yeah. And then I had rounding out. So I had Adam at an A plus I had Neil at an A. I do like the Richardson pick. I I think it maybe for, for a team that hasn't quite set the foundation, like Neil's seems to, it's a bit of a flyer, but you know, take the flyer, take a shot. Um, you know, so, and he did, I I think he could be really, really good. I I mean, for Neil's sake, I, I hope he is for the rest of our sake. I guess I hope he isn't but he seems like a nice mm-hmm. kid so uh you know um i thought neil neil's a lovely guy 
Oh, I was talking about Richardson, but no, oh, yeah, okay. Neil well, I know is a well, Neil I yeah. know is a is a nice guy. Um, <laughs> no, I, I liked all the quarterbacks selected. Um, the the top three wideouts. I I liked Roshan. I had my eye on Roshan potentially in a later round. Um, so I think he could could surprise people. Um, mm-hmm. the the only knock I might have against Neil is I maybe would have tried to add another running back, but again, that's me, and I love drafting running backs. So. Uh, yeah. And then I, I gave myself an A as well, which call me biased, whatever. Um, and yeah, then I, mean, I, I guess my middle like tier remains. It's just out of there. But, um, you know, I, I, had, I had Neil at the top two. I thought that he did a really good job with where he was. You know, the the one who I'll say give him the did less with or did more with less. Um, Dan really had a nice draft for absolutely. only having four picks. Yeah. And not having a pick before like pick 15. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, he took Michael Mayer, you know, a very high upside tight end, Kendra Miller right after that, who could be, you know, and he could be starting a lot of games for the Saints this year with Alvin Kamara and legal issues. Yeah. And then you take a speedster like Jaden Reed, and then another pretty dynamic running back. And so he he only had four picks, but I think he really hit on all four picks. Yeah, I, I agree. So I, I had my tier two, I had uh, Dan as a B plus. Uh, I had you as a B plus, sorry. Uh, and then I had Tim as an A minus. Um, so that was my my second tier. So so right right there with you. Um Yeah, I mean I thought I thought Tim did a good job. Um, you I mean you look at some of the running backs he took. He did take Jaron Hall like a late quarterback. I mean, he got Bryce Young, which I think is a huge thing for Tim. Tim needed some yeah, you know, some higher quality players in the quarterback room. Immediate um, QB one. And then Dalton Dalton Kincaid. I mean, he I yep. think like I think he's a, a guy that, you know, if he takes over the tight end position, and I don't think it's going to happen immediately, but I think it's a better long-term play. Um, I yeah. agree. I, I haven't looked I think, at I whatever mean, Knox's contract situation is, but that that feels like hit so hit or miss that, you know, some stability yeah. up in Buffalo might go a long way. No, um, it looks it looks good. My, I mean, yeah, my I, only I think... my only knock on Tim, I don't understand the Graham Gano pick. Like you already have a kicker. You, you why is anyone carrying it? I put this top, on my top bo- guy my, available. I put this on my board for you as well. I don't understand having a backup kicker. I like what is the? I've done it. Actually, it didn't work. I actually have three kickers right now. Good God. Um, well, really, well, so we I'm... are before cuts. We're before final cuts. We're, we're before so final we're cuts. We're still in camp. I get it. Okay. So, so... I mean, I, I've got like two kickers that I like. And then I was sitting there looking at it. And I was like, there's nobody at this point that like interests me that much. So you remember I was taking two seventh round picks. So right. why not take the highest the highest kicker drafted in yeah. 10 years or whatever? So um, we'll figure it out. I think so. Well, well and that's a, that's another I, I had to dock Dan some points on that one. Not only is he trading away his top round picks, he's also trading away his late round picks now. We just, Daniel, if you get to this point and whatever we're calling this, uh, buddy, we we've got to have an intervention. You got hold to on to your first round picks, picks bud. Away. I don't hold I, on to your first round picks. Chase Claypool and Damian Harris for the number one overall pick. There are was you, some free agent money. Are in there you? Too. Oh, don't. fifteen dollars. Let it, me. It, for the record, if he you had, say compound interest, I am no, shipping no, no, you no. and Lee he, off to Timbuktu. I really, I really think that that Dan. The, thought he was like he just came off a playoff like i, th- I want to say let me double check that also we have 10 um, minutes remaining on this recording because i don't pay oh for Zoom, man so That's lightning okay, round so, let's go <laughs> so uh yeah so i mean dan came off of he had what like i guess he was third the year before third the year before anyway yeah so dan that was that was a bad trade but hey give me a give me like a storyline going forward this year that you like uh well i'll give you i'll give you a couple and i'll be be short of them the the big storyline i'm watching i think our top three teams in the league uh it obviously is jack and mark uh for last year's championship bout uh and and i think adam as well i think adam was right on the cusp last year i think he had the best draft so the the wrestling between those three teams whether Adam's done enough with his young players, whether the older stars for Jack and Mark are going to hold on. I think that's going to drive a lot of this season for me. Uh, Personal honorable mention. uh, I don't know that anyone else besides me and Tim is going to care. I have no clue what's happening in San Francisco. I do hear it's Brock's team team to lose. 
but I don't know what that means. And Trey Lance, I think, is a great quarterback. So I will personally be watching that one, even if uh, no one besides me and Tim is. And then I just have to mention it, you know, Rex Burkhead. Is he still a championship winner? I don't know. These are some storylines to follow. Um, what is um, Tell her we've got eight second. minutes left and then you have to just leave. one second. Okay. All right, so this is the part of the show where we fill time. So let's see. Let's go back. Let's let's see what else we can do. So we also talked about uh, doing a short-term winner and a long-term winner. Uh, it was alluded to earlier. My short-term winner for the draft uh, is running backs by committee. Uh, Stu owns half the Falcons locker room, and Adam owns three-quarters of the Seahawks running back room i have no idea how that's going to pan out uh but i'm excited to see it uh also my short-term winner was timbo uh the man getting married in nary a week uh less than a week wow that happened fast um quarterback one promising tight end some depth at running back i think tim had an awesome draft i think he could make some serious waves this year um Long-term winner, uh, I had East Coast time. Uh, Filch, if you've made it to this point in the, the draft, uh, the draft, the podcast, whatever we're calling this, uh, you're a real slap. Um, and I think, you know, the mountain time zone got a lot of hype leading into proceedings. All right. I have so been running my that. mouth for, hang on, I'm going to finish this thought, though. You know, <laughs> the, the mountain time zone got a lot of hype going into things. And I think East Coast time really held its own. I'm I, I'm really proud of the performance. So I have one of my long term winners of this draft is East Coast time. My other long term winner is Adam, who we've already discussed. Stu, what are some storylines that. that you're watching this year? Thank you for carrying me as I uh, as I had to step out for a moment. Um, so my my couple of storylines, I think that um, the playoff race is wide open, like it hasn't been in a long time. So I think that some of your teams at the bottom, you look at like. You look at Tim, Butch, really Tim and Butch, I think just elevated themselves into the Absolutely. conversation much more. Yeah. Um, so, you know, do I think that Jack, Mark and Lee all have some question marks as some of their guys get older and they've got to build depth around them. You know, a couple of injuries to any of those three could knock them out of like, you know, we give Lee a hard time, right? And he deserves it because he sucks, but um, but at Absolutely. the same time, he scored he scored the most points in the league last year. Oh, and he'll and remind it was you just too. Incredibly unlucky. I mean, it's the the chances that he would not make the playoffs after scoring the most points in the league are so slim in a like a 10 team league like this, where like typically yeah, like I've done it. It's pretty slim. Uh, it's pretty it's slim, happened two years in a row. Or not in a row, but it's happened. Where you scored the, the most thing. points and didn't make it in? I'll go back, I'll look Very it up. Good. Yes. Well, anyway, it's not. But I don't he, know like, that it's as rare it as like it could be. He did it by like a pretty wide margin. Like it wasn't like that a close call. Like yeah. he won like a lot, so that was interesting. Uh, well, didn't win a lot. <laughs> he just um, he would either blow but, people out or lose close yeah. games. So I think that Lee's an interesting impasse with like his quarterbacks and some of this depth. Jacko is is he's got some good young wide receiver depth, but at like running back and things, like he's he's got some work to do. Um, well, I mean, and Jack I just you know, a couple of. But Jack's been Jack's been incredible. I mean, Jack's been a really, really good team and manager for for the jump. Phillips is he's thin. I mean, he is thin, thin, thin. But he's they got a lot set of good. Set it at the top. and forget it. Starting lineups, but if somebody has an injury, it is uh, it. Y y there's well, some I, depth I, there, but it, you just don't know that it. Yeah, there's and a ton I, of and parody I think in this league. It's really going to be fascinating is. to watch. And I think I think Adam and I have a, a strong chance to sure. make pushes this year. I mean, yeah, me adding Bijan and yeah. if Brees Hall comes back looking like himself, then then I'm gonna. I feel like I'm in a good place. My quarterback room is a question. Um, your team I mean, adding a player like Gibbs that can give you like dynamic right off the bat, like top top ten running back potential, like. That's huge. I'm gonna haunt um, y'all's it, dreams forever. No if you matter figure where out the I, I mean, standing. you've already got Jalen Hurts. So if you figure out your your second quarterback, like you're in great shape. Um, so I think that I mean the the one other storyline is you know the what are we what are we gonna call it? Um, well, 
how, who wants Caleb Williams sweep sweepstakes? Oh, I mean, are, is this yeah. the part in the scripting where we introduce tanking? I I really think Dan and Neil have have. I mean, I no that, it the, had to happen eventually. So I've let's... talked to, I've talked to both of them. Them. I, they know that I'm supportive of their teams. Dan and Neil are in tough places. I think that Neil, with the addition of Anthony Richardson, if he's going to get as many reps as he is, is in better position to make the nine spot. Where Dan, Dan needs a lot of help. He's got some talented young guys, but he needs some help. So I think it'll be interesting to see where Dan and Neil finish. I, I would imagine they would be, you know, nine and eight. Um, and Dan. You know, I don't know if he's going to pull some starters, but we might have to sanction uh, him Dan's late in the year if it gets ugly. Scary, sad. Yeah, both of them. The good thing is there are two quarterbacks in this in this draft: Drake May, Caleb Williams. Yeah. it'll be interesting to see. So I just like I um, don't. I think Deshaun's done. I think Aaron's got like two years left. I think Mac is fine, but I don't think he's a, yeah. Dan, yet Dan, it'll be interesting to if see. There what was happens. ever a year to tank, buddy. This. uh I don't know. Could be well, a- and if he's got somebody, I mean, I would I would shop somebody for first rounders. Like you need first round picks if you're going to stay relevant, right? Like I've made a living off of. So you're saying that he should picks. trade players away to get a first round pick? That's, that's what I'm saying. That's, the opposite of his thought. normal typical that's strategy. A serious thought. That's shaking things up in a yeah. way that I was so. Um, well, how do we well, put a bow on this other than to say, let's get to it in like I'm three or four excited, months whenever uh, this actually starts? Yeah. yeah. So remember that I'm not going to add your players until like later in July. So if you are interested, go ahead and put keepers, keeper designations on the guys that you know you want to keep. Um, it doesn't really matter. It just, it's nice for me to see that like people are engaged in doing that. Um, but yeah, we will... And we'll pick right back up a couple of news and notes. Like we'll pick right back up with where we are. Like at the end of July, it'll be free agents and the free agent thing is going to go every day again. So it's, it's on waivers, but this year you do not have to put $1 down to buy somebody. You can, you can place a $0 bet to to pick somebody up that way. That way, if you're really in a pickle, like some guys are late in the late in the year, you don't have to spend any money to just to add players. Now, what you do need to do is check it a couple of days before, as opposed to like realizing on Sunday morning that you need a player. We have big enough rosters that you should be able to have a backup plan. I'm not going to listen to any more belly aching about that. Like late minute rosters. Sorry, not going to lose any sleep for you. So, um, but I can't wait. It's going to be fun. This is the first episode of Commissioner's Corner. Um, I'd like to thank William Kerrigan for all the prep for this, and we've had a blast, and uh, over and out.